Welcome to the third installment of Carnage. This is an adapted Zoom performance of the Yasmina Reza play, God of Carnage, which later became a Roman Polanski film. This episode will again be about 30 minutes long, and once again, there is some blue language, so maybe put the kids to bed. Get yourself a glass of wine, get yourself a beer, sit back and relax, and enjoy our third installment of Carnage. <laughs> that now yeah ma it's me again i forgot to ask you how is he sin? fine well i mean he got his teeth knocked out but he's fine he's in pain yes he's in pain it'll it hurts a bit and it'll pass all right just i'm busy ma okay i'll call you back okay he's still in pain no then why do you worry your mother he can't help himself he always has to worry her Okay, that's enough. Penelope, what is this drama queen bullshit? Penelope, nobody cares about anything outside of himself. I mean, sure, we'd all like to believe in some kind of possible correction when we could author ourselves completely free of selfish consideration. Like, you, like you're writing this book about Darfur, and, and that's great. I understand how you might say, okay, I'll pick a massacre. History is full of them, and I'm going to write a book. Everybody has to save himself somehow. I'm not writing this book to save myself. You haven't read it? You don't know what's in it? Whatever. Oh god, that smell of Kronos is killing me. Reeks. You didn't exactly skimp. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's not your fault. I'm the one who sprayed like a mad woman. And why can't we just take it easy once in a while? Why does everything always have to be so exhausting? You think too much. Women think too much. Well, that's an original response, which must be pleasantly disconcerting to you. I don't know what that means to think too much. I don't understand how you can go on living without some moral sense of the world. Hey, look at me. I'm living. Oh, shut up. Whoa. I detest that miserable complicity of yours. You disgust me. What happened to your sense of humor? I don't have a sense of humor, and I don't want one. Hmm. If you ask me... The couple is the most terrible ordeal God ever inflicted upon us. Marvelous. The couple and the family. Nobody is forcing you to air this out in front of us, Michael. And I might add, it's a little indecent. Ugh, that doesn't bother him. You don't agree? This is all off point, Alan. Say something. Well, he has a right to his ideas. Well, that doesn't mean he has to advertise them. Yeah, all right, maybe. Well, we don't care about their marriage. We're here about a problem with the kids. We don't care about their marriage. Yeah, except... Except what? What are you saying? It is related. It's related. Of course it's related. Well, Ethan's getting two of his teeth broken is related to our marriage. Of course it is. We don't follow you. Take a step back and look at the situation that we're in. Children suck the life out of you and leave us old and empty. It's a law of nature. You see these young couples laughing all the way to the altar and you think they don't know poor fuckers they don't know a thing they're happy hmm. nobody briefs you in the beginning you know i had this army buddy of mine he's gonna have a kid with his new girlfriend i'm like a kid at our age what are you stupid you got 10 15 good years left before you get cancer or you have a stroke and you're gonna saddle yourself with a fucking kid that's not really what you think. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's what I think, all right? Look, I think even worse. Yeah. You're debasing yourself, Michael. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> God, stop crying, Penelope. It only makes it worse. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. <sighs> excellent, isn't it? Oh, excellent. Mm. Oh, uh, could I interest you in a cigar? No, no cigars in here. 
Too bad. What? Were you going to smoke a cigar now, Alan? Well, I do what I want, Nancy. If I want to smoke a cigar, I smoke a cigar. I won't smoke it because I don't want to upset Penelope, who's already on edge, to put it mildly. She's right. Quit sniffling like that. When women cry, men are pushed to a breaking point. Although, unfortunately, I must say that Michael's point of view is completely justified. <laughs> oh. Excuse me? Yes. Dennis. Can I read it to you? Yeah, go ahead. T.W. Pharma Corporation. Yeah, put New York in a specific time of day. God, it's unbearable. What time of day? Well, the time you send it. It has to be hot off the press. Okay. T.W. Pharma Corporation questions. No, no, not questions. Deplores. Questions is wishy-washy. I live with this night and day. He is glued to the cell phone. Our lives are chopped up by the cell phone. Oh, did, one, one second. Nancy... This is very important. Oh, it's always very important. What's happening somewhere else is always more important. Go ahead. Deliberately deceitful allegations. Yeah. Forming part of a strategy two weeks from the company's posting. No, no, not strategy. Scheme. Uh, scheme servicing two weeks from the company's posting, etc. You know, at the, in the street, at the dinner table, everywhere. The company has serious doubts about the source and funding of this study, coming as it does. Uh, study in quotes. Put the word study in quotes. I don't even protest anymore. Okay. Unconditional surrender. Oh, I think I'm going to vomit again. Oh, where, where's the bucket? Oh, I don't know. At the eve of the annual stockholders meeting, um, this may indeed be a barefaced attempt at manipulating the stock price and damage TW Farmer's reputation. Now, Walter thinks this line is a little dicey. Okay, well then just quote me. This is a barefaced attempt to manipulate the stock price. Uh, it's over there. Go stand near it, please. Ben. It's all right. We're set up to handle this now. The stock price and to stabilize my client according to TW former attorney Alan Cameron. Okay, I'll make these corrections and I'll put it out there. AP, Reuters, major newspapers, trade journals, whole shebang. What is wrong with you? You're gonna throw up again. You're so caring, it's touching. I'm worried. Oh, I didn't get that. My mistake. Oh, come on, Nancy, will you? You and I don't have to do this. Their marriage is going downhill. We don't have to try and compete with them. Hey, what gives you the right to say our marriage is going downhill? What gives you the right? One second. Walter. Is, is the press release ready, Alan? Yeah, I just had a red back. They're sending it over to you. Uh, and you say this is an, an attempt at manipulation? Manipulation. Yeah, manipulation of the stock price. I'll call you right back, okay? I didn't say it. Stephen did. Michael. Oh, Michael, sorry. I won't let you judge our family. And don't judge our son, either. Th that's different. Your son brutalized our son. They're young. They're just kids. Kids roughhouse in the playground. Always have, always will. It's a rule of nature. No. No, it isn't. Sure it is. It takes a little education to substitute the rule of law for violence. The origin of law, of course, you know, is brute force. Maybe for cavemen it was. Not in this world. <laughs> in this world. Uh, tell me about this world. You're boring. This whole conversation is boring. Penelope, I believe in the god of carnage, the god whose rule has been unchallenged since time immemorial. You're interested in Africa, right? What's the matter? Oh, don't worry about me. Nancy? I'm just fine. See, I just come back from the Congo. They got kids there, trained to kill at the age of eight. In the course of their childhood, they might kill hundreds of people. They'll kill with a machete, a shotgun, a kalash, a thumper. So obviously, when my son busts some other kid's tooth, even two teeth, with a bamboo switch by the sandbox, I'm not quite as shocked and as indignant as you are. Well, you should be. Thumper? <laughs> yes, that's what they call a grenade launcher. Oh, God, are you all right? Yeah, I'm just fine. What the hell is wrong with you? What's wrong with her? Oh, it's vile. It's nothing. You know, don't tell me about Africa. I know all about suffering in Africa. I don't doubt it. That's all I've been thinking about for months. Don't get her started with all this. Please. What What are you doing? What? <laughs> oh, shit! Oh, <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually starting to like you. Oh, Jesus. Shut up! God. Whoa. Talk about commitment to world peace and stability, right? Shut the fuck up, Michael! <sighs> oh. God. You got a real swing. Oh. Oh, um, are you sure that's a good idea? Mm. 
Mm -hmm. Very sure this will do me some good. You know, we live in New York City. We don't live in Kinshasa. We live in New York with the customs of Western society. What happens in a Brooklyn playground is about Western values, to which, like it or not, I happen to subscribe. Oh, so beating your husband must be one of those customs then, right? <laughs> Michael, I am warning you. Yeah. She was all over you like a bad rash. If, if I were you, it would melt my heart, but... Finish the job soon. He's making fun of you. Can you believe that? I don't give a shit about him. No, really. Morally, we're supposed to overcome our impulses, but there are times you don't want to overcome them. I mean, who wants to say a Hail Mary when you're having sex? Can you buy the scotch around here? This stuff, not very likely. Thumper. <laughs> <laughs> Thumper. Really? Thumper. Well, why didn't you just say grenade launcher? Because that's the term. Just like they say Kalash, not Kalashnikov or AK-47. Who's they? That's enough, Nancy. That's enough. Hotshot firebrands like my husband. You got to understand. It's hard for them to get excited about what happens down the block. Exactly. I don't see why. I don't see why. We're all citizens of the world. I don't see why we shouldn't have some sense of community. Oh, Penny, please give us a break with a highfalutin claptrap. I'm gonna fucking kill him! Mm. Yeah, Dennis. Well, we read it to him. He has a problem with bare face. Okay, so take out bare face. Okay, what, what should we... Uh, a brazen, a brazen attempt to manipulate the stock price. There you go. Oh, she's right. It's unbearable after a while. Sign off on the rest? Yep. Good. That's fine. So, uh, what were we talking about? Numbers? I was saying that whatever my husband thinks, whether it happens here or thousands of miles away, we must be equally concerned. Equally <laughs> concerned. Yeah. Nancy, it's absurd to drink in your condition. What condition? I'm perfect. You know, it's an interesting idea, but I don't really think that there's... Yes, Dennis. We're saying nothing before the release, right? Interviews? No, no interviews before we get this release up. Well, he wants to appear humane. He thinks that the stockholders may be sensitive to an expression. Mr. Cowan, would you please put an end to this nerve-wracking conversation? No, no way. The stockholders won't give a shit. Just remind him that... Nancy, what, what are you... Wait. Nancy, what are you... <gasps> Oh my god! Are you out of your fucking mind?! Oh shit. Um, where's, where's the blow dryer? Where's the blow dryer? You should be put in a home, dear! I can't believe this. I can't believe this. I got everything in there. It's, it's brand new. I spent hours setting it up. <laughs> I can't believe you did that! That was an irresponsible thing to do! I, I got everything! My, my whole life was in there! <laughs> hang on, hang on! I mean, maybe we'll get it running again? No, no, no way. I mean, it's history. I want to take out the battery and the, the SIM card. How do you open it? Uh, I, I, just, I just got it. I, I don't know. I... Uh, Alright, let me see, let me see. <laughs> I think it's funny, I think it's funny. Ah, there! Alright. Penelope, this is not funny! <laughs> My husband has spent the entire afternoon drying things! <laughs> forget it, man, forget it. Just, nothing can be done. You gotta wait. Do you want to use the phone? Oh, I, I must say. What must you say, Michael? No, oh, I, I don't even know what to say. I'd say it feels better. It feels better like that. I'd say it's more peaceful, wouldn't you? Men get so attached to their toys. It just, they lose their credibility. A man should have both hands free, in my opinion. But even briefcases. 
I liked this guy once and then I saw him carrying this rectangular bag but with a shoulder strap. <laughs> <laughs> it was over. A bag with a shoulder strap. Uh, that's the worst. But the cell phone always at his fingertips is the worst too. The man should seem alone, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Seem like he can go it alone. I-, I got a John Wayne idea of manhood too. What was it he had? A Colt 45. Oh, something that empties a room. Any man that doesn't give off those loner vibes just doesn't come off as having any substance. So Michael, I guess you're happy now. Our touchy feely, whatever you called it, is coming apart at the seams. But hey, you know what? This almost feels good, in my opinion. Yeah, well, in my opinion, some people can hold their liquor better than others. I'm as normal as can be. (laughs) Yeah, right. I'm beginning to see things with a pleasant serenity. (laughs) So good. (laughs) Pleasant serenity. (laughs) I can't understand why you're wasting yourself right out in the open, Darjeeling. Shut the hell up. (laughs) Hey, Alan. Take me. Relax. No cigar smoke in the house. <laughs> you got your Hoyo de Monterey or uh, Party Gas D, number four. You got your Hoyo Coronation or uh, are the Epicure number two. Uh, where did you get these? Oh, you don't want to know. <laughs> mm, seriously? Oh, the uh, Spanish connection. <laughs> mm. yeah, my cookware guy started going with a flight attendant. Oh, it brings in like two boxes a week. Okay, can't smoke in a house with an asthmatic child and stop telling him your whole life story. Who has asthma? Our son. And the hamster, didn't we? Yeah, you know, it's true that pets aren't good when you're asthmatic. Not good at all. Even goldfish aren't necessarily recommended. Do I have to listen to this crap? I'm sorry, I guess I'm guessing I'm the only one who doesn't see things with a, a pleasant serenity. To tell you the truth, to tell you the truth, I've never been so unhappy. I think this is the unhappiest drunk. day of my whole life. I told you, you're an unhappy drunk. Michael, every word out of your mouth just slays me. I don't get drunk. I, I had a sip of your shitty 18-year-old single mall that you try out like it's the eighth fucking wonder of the world. I don't get drunk. And believe me, I wish I could. Because it would be such a relief to drown every little sorrow in a good, stiff drink. My husband is unhappy, too. Look at him. All hunched over like he was left on the side of the road. I think this is the unhappiest day of the day. It is. I'm sorry, Doodle. Turn that phone dryer off! His thing is a goner! Michael! Michael! Yeah, Ma. Ma? Mom, I told you we were busy. Why not you? What? Say that again? Why do you want me to stop taking my Antril? Because it's medication that can kill you. It's poison. It's not poison. It's not poison, no. Michael. Hey, I got someone here that can explain, okay? What do you mean I got someone Tell her. Can... Tell her what? Tell her what you know about that deadly shit of yours. What can we tell her? He doesn't know anything. My dude, hello. Uh, 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 hello. Uh, how are you feeling now? Well, I'm all right now, but you're not thinking about my Yeah, yeah. My mother racing is a week away. And are you in pain? I can't be on my feet, doctor. Oh, of course, but the the operation will fix that, right? The worst part is the other leg, Linda. The other leg too, huh? Are you no, no, I'm not an orthopedist. Shit, call him doctor. Doctor? 
Oh, what a laugh. <laughs> Hang up. What is all this about my aunt's room? But you're, I mean, you don't have any balance issues, right? No, I just dragged my foot a little. Can it kill me, doctor? Can it really kill me? No, 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 of course not. N not at all. Don't, don't listen to what people say. Still, it's probably a good idea now for you to take it for a little while. What do I mean? Just until, uh, until the operation is behind you. They're going to ruin me. If you could see me, you'd be surprised how well preserved I am. Yeah, it sounds like you're in excellent shape. Oh, oh all right, Ma. Too, kind of you. you got that? Yeah. Stop taking the medication. Stop taking the medication. Just stop I taking it. Stop taking just it. Just do as you're told. I need to talk uh, to my own doctor. I'm going to call you back. Decision. I can't just... <sighs> I can't deal with her anymore. The shit you put up with in life. All right. Should we just wrap this up? I mean, should I come back here tonight with Zachary? Let's decide. This is getting to be like, whatever. This is what we're here for, after all. Oh, now I'm going to be sick. Where's the bucket? Hey, that's enough, all right? I say both sides share the blame. So there you are. Both sides share the blame. What, you're serious? Excuse me. I is that what you really think? It's what I think, yeah. Our son Ethan, who took coding last night at three in the morning, shares the blame? He's not necessarily innocent. Get the fuck out. Get out of my house! Get the fuck out! Alan, do something! Alan, do something! Shut up! God! I should have my makeup mirror! And my purse! Oh, Alan, stand up for me. Why don't you stand up for me? Let's go. It's not like I'm strangling her. Oh, what did I do to you? The blame is not shared. The victim and the criminal are not the same. Criminal. Oh. Give it a fucking rest, Penelope. Enough of these idealistic theories. Which I believe in. You, you, you believe in, all right? This crush you got on these sedan sambos is spilling over into everything now. I'm horrified. How can you be so openly despicable? Because I feel like it. I feel like being openly despicable. One day you'll understand the sheer horror of what's happening in that part of the world and you'll be ashamed. You'll be ashamed of your inability to take action of your contemptibly nihilistic attitude. Yes, Darjeeling. You're so wonderful. You are the best and the brightest among us all. Yes! Yes, I am. Let's get out of here, Alan. These people are monsters. But, no, stop it, Nancy. Stop it. No! I want to get blind drunk! I want to drink some more. This bitch throws my bag against a wall and nobody lifts a fat fucking finger! No, I want to be blind drunk. drunk! I think you're drunk enough. Oh, really? What? Well, how can you let her call our son a criminal? No, we come to their house to work things out with them and they insult us, they browbeat us, they lecture us on being good citizens of the planet. <laughs> You know what? I am glad that our son kicked the shit out of your son, and I wipe my ass with your human rights. A little booze, and wow, we see her true self. What happened to that gracious, demure woman with the soft eyes? I told you. I told you. Well, what did you tell him? That she was fake. This woman is totally fake. I'm sorry. And when exactly did you say that? When you were in the shit box? Oh, you had known her for 15 minutes and you already knew she was fake? Yeah, I just have to pick up on these things and people pretty quickly. Yeah, she does. Yeah, I have a nose for it. Fake, well, what does that mean? Oh, God. What does that mean? Alan, I just don't want to listen to this anymore. Why are you putting me through this? Just really huh? relax. Relax, doodle. <laughs> She's a complete phony. She doesn't care any more than you do. True. Yeah, it's true. It's true. You're saying it's true! 
don't give a shit. It's so obvious right from the beginning. They don't give a shit. She doesn't give a shit either. You're right. Like you do? But hang on a second. I, I... Let him talk, honey. Explain to me, Michael, exactly how you care. I mean, what does that mean? Anyway, you are more credible when you're being openly despicable. But the truth is, nobody here cares. I mean, except maybe Penelope. One must acknowledge her integrity. I don't need your acknowledgement. I don't need your acknowledgement. But I do care. I really do care. We care in a hysterical way, Nancy. Not like heroic figures of some social movement. Now, I saw your friend Jane Fonda on the TV the other day. Maybe me want to run out and buy a Ku Klux Klan poster. My friend Jane Fonda? What the fuck does she have to do with all this? Oh, you're the same breed. You're the same kind of involved, problem-solver woman. Those aren't the women we like. The women we like are sensual and crazy and shock full of hormones. The ones who want to show off how perceptive they are, the gatekeepers of the world, ugh, they're a huge turnoff. Even poor Michael, your own husband, is turned off. Hey, don't you speak for me. We don't give a shit about what you like in a woman. Where do you get off spouting these opinions? You are one man whose opinions we don't give a shit about. She's screaming like, like a quartermaster on a slave ship. I what about her? She doesn't scream? She didn't just scream that your little asshole was right to beat up ours? Well, he was right. Our, at least our kid isn't a little wimpy-ass pussy. Yeah, and yours is a fucking snitch! That's supposed to be better? Oh, let's go, Alan. Why are we still in this house? Good fucking question! Here. Here! Woo! No! for tuning in. My name is MJ and I directed and produced this uh, little performance for you. Uh, really, really appreciate it. I had such an incredible, incredible team working on this and so I just thought it would be uh, very appropriate that they all take a moment to say hey. Yay! Amazing. So we have Amy. I'm Amy and I'm the stage manager. We have Matt. <laughs> That's me, I'm muted. Hi, I'm Matt and I uh, relish the chance of playing someone with the emotional depth that Dennis did. Thank you very much, MJ. <laughs> uh, he also stage managed episode two. Oh, I did. And we have Dean. Hello, I'm Dean Graham. I played the character of Walter. Oh, yes, he in fact did. Uh, we have Charlie. Hi, I'm Charlie. I uh, was female associate in the early episodes and then Michael's mother in the last two. <laughs> we have Andrew. Hello, I'm Andrew. Uh, I played Alan and with his wonderful group of people. Amazing. And we have Ivy. Hello, everybody. I'm Ivy. I played Nancy. Just wanted to show everyone the remnants of that show. <laughs> Yeah! Yeah! Uh, and we have Paul. Uh, hello, I'm Paul Colin Thomas. Uh, I play the role of Michael, and this is the remnants of, of my show, so that's I'm feeling great. 
Yeah. <laughs> I think he's going to drink the rest of his show. Um, <laughs> just a special shout out to Ginny Lofthouse and Matt McKay, who shot and starred in the opening credits. So they deserve a big round of applause, as well as Chris McLeish, who wrote our theme song, was a brilliant songwriter. And Hugh Stubbins, who read in during rehearsals uh, when we needed an extra voice in the room. So, yeah, I just wanted to thank you all again so much for witnessing the madness. It's been a, a huge learning curve and Obviously, this is a very, very foreign form of performance, but the fact that you've tuned in, watched wherever you are in the world, um, means so, so much to everyone here. So I just want to say a huge thank you to you all, and I hope you have a wonderful evening wherever you are. Have a wonderful day. Bye, everyone.